All right, let's talk about analog and digital signals. So analog and digital signals um, are two different types of signals. In this class, we will primarily deal with digital signals. Let's talk about first what analog signals are. So they're continuous. They have an infinite range of values and they are uh, much more exact values, but they're more difficult to work with. Digital signals, on the other hand, are discrete. Um, there are a finite range of values. There are only two, as a matter of fact, and they're not as exact as analog, but it's a lot easier to work with them. So let's give an example. A digital thermostat in a room displays a temperature of 72 degrees. An analog thermometer measures the room temperature at 72.482. The analog value is more continuous, is continuous and more accurate, but the digital value is perfectly adequate um, and it's much easier to process electronically. So you see the difference there, all right? Um, analog signals. Uh, it's any time varying signal. Um, the m maximum and minimums can, could be positive or negative or they could be zero. They could be periodic, meaning they have the same pattern over and over repeating, or non-periodic, they could be random. Um, sine waves and square waves are two very common analog type signals. Um, this square wave here is not digital because it has negative values, right? So that's the thing people sometimes get confused. They say, oh, this is analog, but this isn't. Well, it is analog because while it is a square wave, which digital signals are square, um, this has z uh, negative values, so that means it is not digital. All right, so let's talk about the parts of a um, analog signal. This is the amplitude from the zero to the peak, and then this distance from here to here would be the peak to peak amplitude. All right, and the period is the time it takes for one complete cycle. See how this repeats? So from here to here is the same as from here to here. So that length of time, time is on this scale here, is the period. And the frequency then is one divided by the period, and that has units of hertz. A hertz is a one divided by a second. All right, let's talk about logic levels for digital signals. So we normally say that zero volts is um, a digital zero, five volts is a digital high. That would also be true, low or zero would be false. Um, on would be a digital one, off would be a digital zero, um, high and low. In this range, um, from 0 0.8 vol volts to about two volts, that's invalid and most digital circuits cannot interpret that. So um, digital signals are usually called square waves. Sometimes they're called clock signals, all right? And they have a minimum of zero and their maximum would be five volts. So the x-axis would be time, the y-axis would be volts, and the minimum value would be zero. If there's a number less than zero, then um, that's not a digital signal, all right? And they can be periodic or non-periodic. So see, like this one is repeating and this one is repeating, but you might have a little up here and then a big up here, all right? Um, the time the signal is high could be any amount of the total period, okay? Meaning the time that the signal is up. All right, okay, so let's talk about the um, parts of a digital signal. Um, the amplitude for digital signals would always be five volts. It's always zero to five. Period is the time it takes to repeat. Again, so to get one complete cycle. Frequency then would be one divided by the period. The time high would be the time the signal is at five volts. So here, right? That would be the time high while it's up. Time low would be here while it's at zero. 
So duty cycle is the time high divided by the total period times 100%, all right? And we say that a rising edge is when we go from a zero to a one, or from zero volts to five volts. And a falling edge is from a one to a zero. So here's a falling edge, here is a falling edge. All right, we use oscilloscopes to take measurements. Um, luckily, we use multi-sim, and it has um, a virtual oscilloscope. All right, so the nice thing is, you know, we can change our channels, we can adjust our time base. Um, there are these markers over on the sides we can drag around, it's very handy. All right, and so if we want to get the amplitude, the period, the frequency, the time high, the time low, and the duty cycle for this one, we would, you know, take a look at it and see. All right, so it says that our time base, let's start with amplitude. Okay, it says channel A, the scale is 2 volts per division. Now remember that was your Y axis, so this blocks one division, so this would be 2 volts, this would be 4 volts, half a volt, 5 volts, right? Well, we already knew that. 5 volts is the amplitude. All right, period. Time to repeat. Okay, so let's see. The time base, the x-axis, is in 2 millisecond per division, so per block. So this is 2 milliseconds. This is 4 milliseconds. Okay, and so there are 2, and there are 5 little increments, right? So this one would be like... It appears to be right on the little second hash mark. So if you want to figure out exactly what that is, you would do um, 2 divided by 5. So each little increment here, see that from there to there, would be worth 0.4. So this would be 4, 4.4 .4 milliseconds. This would be 4.8 milliseconds for the period, of course we need to change that, so, um, alright, so, we got the amplitude, okay, the period here, it says 2 milliseconds per division, and so it's 2, oh, I was doing the time high, so this is 2, 4, 6, 8, right, the period is 8 milliseconds, the frequency would be 1 divided by that, but we have to change milliseconds to seconds. So don't do 1 divided by 8. Do 1 divided by 0 .008, and you'll get 125 hertz. 8 milliseconds would be 0 .008 seconds. All right, time high. So 2.4 division, see, there would be... And that's going to work out to be 4.8 milliseconds. The time low then is going to be 8 minus 4.8, 3.2. Right? Duty cycle then would be the time high, 4.8, divided by 8 milliseconds times 100. So it's going to be 60%. All right, for the duty cycle. All right, and see if we drag our markers here, though, we can actually measure that it's 8 milliseconds and we can measure the time high and the time low. See we drag the markers here across that and we got the time high and here we did the time low.